In this lecture, we try to understand what do we mean by the isocost curve. In economics, there are three economic agents that we generally try to understand. The first being the consumer, the second the producer, and the third the government. The ISO cost showcases the budget constraint that the producer faces. Let's think of you being a producer of chocolates. To produce the output of chocolates, you would obviously require factor inputs that is few laborers and capital. However, as you know that this factor inputs come at a cost. Let's say you can buy one labor for rupees 10 and one unit of capital for rupees 20. Now I do understand that you do not get labor at rupees 10, but this is just an example. Note that if as a producer you have a budget of 10,000 rupees to produce chocolates and you spend all the 10,000 rupees only to buy labor so that only labor produces chocolates, then the maximum labor that you can buy is 10,000 upon 10 which equals 1,000. 10,000 here is your budget and 10 is the price of labor. If you plot this on the graph such that you plot labor on the x-axis and capital on the y-axis, then you can plot 1000 somewhere here. Notice that if you spend your entire budget only on buying labor and no capital, then this point here represents 1000 labor and zero capital. Similarly, if you spend all of your budget on purchasing only capital, then the maximum capital that you can buy is 10,000 divided by 20, which equals 500. Notice that this is the maximum capital you can buy and this point on the graph represents that if you spend all your budget on purchasing capital, then you cannot buy any labor. However, as you know, it's not realistic for any producer to just buy labor or just buy capital to produce chocolates. You would require the combination of both, that is, you will require machines as well as human touch to produce chocolates. Hence, you might decide to use 400 units of capital and 200 units of labor. Notice that even when you do so, your expenditure is still 10,000. You can also use 300 units of capital and 400 units of labor to produce chocolates. Or you can also use 200 units of capital and 600 units of labor to produce chocolates. In simple terms, you can use any combinations of capital and labor that you want to produce the chocolates by spending 10,000 rupees. The combination you choose depends on your needs. When you join these points, you get a downward sloping curve. This curve in front of you is called the ISO cost curve. As you can see, the ISO cost showcases us the different combinations of factor inputs that costs the same to the producer. These are all the points showcasing combinations of capital and labor and all the combination costs rupees 10,000 to the producer. One thing to remember is that higher ISO cost showcases higher level of cost to the producer. So if I draw an ISO cost line somewhat like this, then you can clearly see that over here the cost of labor and capital has increased. This point represents that the producer is buying 2000 units of labor and at this point it represents 1000 units of capital. This is only possible if he is ready to spend 20,000 rupees. Hence all the points on this ISO cost curve showcases the cost of 20,000 rupees. Always remember that ISO quant showcases level of production whereas ISO cost showcases the cost to the producer. That's it from this video. Thank you for being patient and as always, adios hasta la vista.